recording and we will jump into the conversation. How have you been, everybody, ladies? I'm glad that um, this is for ladies alone. It's, it's been a very good time. <laughs> I don't want to use any, any, other, any other word. Um, I just want to um, be upbeat. I want to remain positive, but hey, ladies, um, from all over the world, how has it been at your end? Uh, I see some people from Canada. I see some people from the UK. Um, some people are right here in the Zoom uh, meeting, and I know that some people are watching on the Facebook group, right? So wherever you're watching from, just drop, drop us a comment. Let's even know where we're watching from, because this one, eh, it is sister to sister gist, like holding no bears. We are just, we are just going to be saying it as it is, right? Um, we are going to be talking to one another, encouraging one another, comforting one another, and just, you know, just generally having a great time. So before we go into the meat of the conversation, just tell me, uh, tell us, let me open the comments. Uh, where are you watching this from? And how is it going at your end? What's, 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 um, What's the economic climate like? Like Canada, yes, I see Ontario, I see Lagos, yes. So how's it going? What, what, what's been happening around you? What have the conversations been like, right? With your friends, with your hobby, with your spouse, with your colleagues? What have been the predominant topic, you know, in your conversations? Just tell me. Again, I mean, this is women only. So there's absolutely nothing to worry about. There's absolutely nothing to hold back on. We want to just gist and say it as is right now, right? Okay, Tommy Lala from Bonnie Island, I see you. And of course, if you can turn on your videos, it will be beautiful. I love to see people's videos on because it gives, it, it gives whoever the speaker is the ginger. So thank you. I see that very bold lipstick, like, come on, give it to us. Marianne, thank you. You're glowing. Olu Adam Larry, I see you. Olu okay, I see you. Turn on your videos. This is sister only. This is not them, but ladies only. Yes, thank you. Augusta, Joy. I, I love that. Uh, what, what do you call it now? Ogoi. What, what is it? What is it she's wearing now? I mean, why am I suddenly forgetting? Thank you. I love to see it. I love to see it. So if, even if you're in bed, just turn on your video if you can and um, right. So Lola says we need to get multiple streams of income, inflation, salary, product called glory. We need for more money. Oh, yes, I know, I know, I know. And that's why we are here tonight, um, you know, just to sort of encourage one another, glean from one another. So I would just be sharing for a few minutes and then I have some panelists, I have some people I would also spotlight their videos and then we get to talk about some of these things happening. Um, Pastor Kualua from the UK, I see you. I really, really love to see everybody's beautiful faces. Thank you, inflation, multiple sources of income. I know, I know, I know, right? In church, we are talking about what is happening in the economy, at home, conversations, even at parties. We have to go, hey, okay, can you see what is happening? Oh, hey. America, the scarcity of um, uh, formula in Canada. This is, you know, we are all just inundating ourselves in the process of gisting. We are meant to be gisting, but then we are sort of passing the energy of fear to one another, ladies, right? I am hoping that by the reason of this conversation we'll be having tonight, um, you know, we, we will, you know, just get the necessary relief uh, for some of us, we will get um, clarity on what to do. For some of us, we will get encouragement. Uh, for some of us, we will get new ideas, right? So please fasten your seat belts, get ready to um, take notes, get ready to raise your hand, right? And to share your own wisdom with us tonight, right? So in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes, I put together a few things to share, and then I will spotlight my panelists and then we will just choose and ask questions are we ready somebody says gary and Kuli Kuli don't enter men oh my god that is so funny like gary i hope you're not giving your children gary and Kuli Kuli to meet up it is well 
It is well because money is inanimate. The economy is inanimate. They cannot be powerful, more powerful than us, right? We are created in the image of God, right? We, we, we are an embodiment of wisdom, of grace, of great, of glory, and so many things. So the economy cannot be determining um, our emotions, right? The economy cannot be swinging us you know, into different moods. We are ready, we are ready. Gary Self is not smiling, I see, right? Invite your friends. I will share a few things and then I will take the conversation away from there. Tell me your expectations also. Maybe that would also help. What are some of the things you think you would like to learn from tonight? What are some of the areas you want for us to touch in? Um, DTF, I see you. Please go on my Facebook group if you can and help share it into the Smart Stewards Facebook group. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, PM, I hope you are on ground to receive those who will be coming in as well. Right, okay, so we are victorious. Um, ideas on better money management. Keep it coming, Akite, thank you for sharing. And for those who have turned on their videos, I absolutely love it. Thank you. Tai Wojo, I see you. Augusta, I see you. You do, you know, these Zoom meetings, you never could say when there will be surprises, when there will be gifts. You know, leave your video off and you'll be on the last page. Right, you you don't know when the waters will be stirred. You don't know where that coach will be. You know, just um, motivated or inspired to give somebody money or any gift. You never could say, see videos coming on. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me share a few things. Um, as as the queen of acronyms, you know that I would leave you with a few things tonight. And uh, but let me tell you the crux of the conversation tonight is in the panel session. Now, I don't want to call it panel session, but like, like, like the gist session where I get to ask some people a few questions, you know, and we'll be touching on different things happening around the world. But again, let me leave you with seven Gs. Um, and I will quickly share my slide and we will take it up from there. Right, got you. Um, can you see my slides, please? Let me do my screen. One minute. Um, please help accept the people who are on the waiting room. I don't want that to distract me. Any money where I get in 2022? When did that song come out, sir? Any money where I get like this? Now for enjoyment. Hey, now for enjoyment. Right. Um, the title of this very short conversation is Any Money Where I Get in 2020. I know in, 20, in 2022, rather, in 2018, 2019, it would have been a lot easier to sing that song like with confidence, like any money like this. But this year, I mean, whoever sang that song must have been in despair because again, <laughs> any money we I get like this, if he hadn't, you know, given us those lyrics, we would be like, which money? There's really no money anywhere. But ladies, we are victorious, we are winners, we are wired to, to excel and to succeed, and so shall we. Now, I go into my slides for those who are just meeting me for the first time. My name is Shola Adeshaki. I am the lead coach and founder of Smart Stewards. Without much ado, um, you already know what I do, I believe, and that's why you are here. You probably saw this on my social media pages or at the Smart Stewards social media pages, or maybe a friend invited you. So glad to have you here. Um, Right now, we are also streaming this uh, to my Facebook page in case we have any glitches, which I do not anticipate. Please just head on to my Facebook page to um, you know, catch the conversation. Right, ladies, what, what has been happening around the world? I think that that's a good place to start. What has been happening? You know, you wake up, you listen to the news, like I'm like, what is happening? You just wake up every day to different news, even from the US, the UK, Russia, Canada, just everywhere. One of the things that surprised me the most earlier this year was the fact that, you know, Russia couldn't meet up with some of its debts. I'm like, what, 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 Russia? You know, there's that tussle between the US and Russia about, you know, who's the most powerful nation. Everybody is, they are bugging, like, hey, what is wrong with you? But even a whole Russia wasn't able, defaulted on some of his debts. And I'm like, wow, what is happening? 
Then in church earlier today, you know, right after church, I was going through my Twitter page and I saw that um, Russia just rolled out a long list of, I think about 963 individuals who cannot in their lifetime come to Russia. How many of you saw it? How many of you saw that, uh, that list? Uh, Morgan Freeman, the popular actor who I think should be in his maybe late 70s or early 80s, um, Donald Trump, of course, Kamala Harris, and I think one of the prominent people that was exempted was Donald Trump for ob obvious reasons. So I'm like, hey, can there ever be a time where even the powerful, even the, the, the most powerful president in the world is not able to go into Russia or go into any part of the world? Things are happening. We live in such an unprecedented time. So what's happening around the world? I already said you know, a few things. Um, PM, I need you to please help accept people in. I, I, I don't want to lose track of what I'm doing. I see people are coming in and just a minute, maybe I can also make somebody uh, a co-host so that, uh, damn Larry, I'm also- I am doing that, I'm admitting people. Okay, all right, thank you, thank you. All right, so aside from what I just described, we see inflation. Even if you have never understood the meaning of inflation, by now, you, you do not need any finance coach to even show you or explain what inflation is. Some of the things that you bought, say, for a particular amount last year, some of them have tripled, some of them have doubled in prices. Like what is happening? That's inflation happening. And you see, for those in Nigeria, I know a lot of people here in Nigeria are listening in from Nigeria. You will be like, no, Nigeria is the only one. Ah, Nigeria is only not. our leaders. They are the ones causing the problem. But see, inflation is happening right now everywhere. Even in the US, November of last year, I think it rose to about 7%. And they said that was the highest in like four decades. But these days, right? Somebody was telling me, was it the UK or the US that the price of gas has also shot up like significantly? Why? Because of the Russia war. Things are happening in Nigeria. I mean, typically I have an idea of what it takes to you know, run our family for the month, groceries and all of that. And I sent my house out for the first time to Mount 12 um, you know, last week. Usually I would outsource, but I'm just like, you are just sitting now at home. You are getting fat in my house, which is okay. I don't have a problem with it, but you know what? Let's fill, let's fill the, the burden together small, right? You go to the market yourself. And she came back with the same amount. She got less than half of what we used to buy in the past. That's inflation, right? Around the world, what's happening? What is happening, right? Then you hear about depreciation and devaluation for those in Nigeria, especially you hear things about, oh, the Naira is, the dollar, the Naira is now 600 to a dollar. What is happening? On my Instagram post uh, uh, page a few days ago, I think it was last week, you know, I put out a post. I was just going through my passport at the back, you know, where we would usually buy PTA and the history. And I realized that um, in 2009, I bought dollar for less than, I can't remember, maybe 150 or so. I looked at pounds, I bought pounds sterling at less than 300. And that's, I mean, if I brought out my earlier passport, maybe I would have seen, I mean, much lower prices. So depreciation and devaluation, do I need to explain? If you had 360,000 at the beginning of January of 2020 or 2021, you would have been able to buy $1,000. But these days you need 580,000 and it keeps changing every day. These days, you need six hundred thousand to buy a thousand dollars. That's devaluation, you know, explained in a kindergarten manner. That means it, you, it, it will take you more naira to buy. It will cost you more naira in buying dollars. Stock market decline. That's another thing that is happening. How many of you have stocks? How many of you have bought stocks on bamboo on passfolio? What has been happening? with your portfolio, right? As an individual, as a matter of policy, I don't check my portfolio like <laughs> every day, like some people do, or every week. Maybe I check once in two months. This year, maybe I've checked only twice because 
People can say, hey, the thing has gone down. I put $20,000. Now it is $16,000. Hey, I put $1,000. Now it is $500. There's, there's a decline, right? The, the market is entirely bearish. And for those who also are into cryptocurrency, so it's, it's like a double-edged bass balls for everybody. Prices of stocks around the world, Tesla, a, a few weeks ago, I wanted to buy Tesla. I'm like, hey, it has come back to come down to 800. Oh, let me buy. I bought two days after the thing went plunged further down. Who are we going to hold? Do you see? I think there are some men on this call because I've seen funny, funny men names, but maybe their wives are using their, their whatever. It's fine. Food prices war. There's a war. Food prices around the world. How could you ever explain the scarcity of formula in America? In America, when you have your baby in America, as you are going home, they will give you tons and tons of formula. So even the people who have money, they are not able to buy. Those in Canada, what is happening at your end? Because, I mean, we hear a lot more uh, from the US, from the UK, gas prices and all of that. What is happening? Lockdown. In 2022, there's lockdown in China, in Shanghai. They are still locking down. They are still saying this corona is like, what is happening, right? And then, of course, we have the Ukraine-Russian saga, which is um, causing a whole lot of some of these things that we have explained. Because, I mean, these are, I mean, Russia is arguably one of, one of the strongest um, economies in the world. So if they're having issues with um, oil and all of those things, it's affecting everybody. What's happening? So for those, because some of us live in a bubble, maybe you are not aware of some of these things. It's not impossible. Do you know people live in a bubble? Some people, they don't even know what is happening because their husbands are the ones who are saying, yeah, my darling, I just transferred two million. You want to travel? Your ticket is bought. Um, shopping is done. The driver has taken the children. So some women, and they don't even know what is happening. Believe you me. So they are just cruising. But so if you are here and you're like, really, this has been happening. Ah, I didn't know. Please know. Right, what's happening? So I, I thought to share a few Gs in like, I hope in like six minutes, I'm able to breeze through them. And then we'll go into, into the conversations and encourage one another so these are things that have worked for me to be honest um even with me uh within my investment club within my circle of friends it's it's been a very challenging year to be honest my for the first time my personal investments have taken the heat my portfolio have taken has taken the heat things are happening like kilo shelly bongo what is happening right but we are encouraged like i like where i started from we look at these things and we know that, I mean, if you look at history, like there have been recessions in the past and we have, we have come out of it. We, there have been things that have affected um, economies, right? Maybe not in this magnitude, the global economy, but hey, when there was world, world war, well, I mean, could it have affected economies more than this? Who knows? I wasn't alive when the world war was fought, right? So how do we navigate. The first thing I would quickly like to share with us is this game of money has to be personalized. Um, it's good to get encouragement from people. It's good to, you know, sort of, uh, you know, listen to finance experts. It's good to uh, jump on webinars. It's good to go for coaching calls. But hey, this more than ever before is a time where as individuals, as families, we must sit down to say, girl, what is happening? Where am I? Where am I headed? What am I going to do? What do I really need to do? This is a time where we must realize that what works for someone might not necessarily work for us. This is a time where we must realize that, girl, hey, what I see on social media is not enough to either sway me this way Swim me that way or just, you know, discourage me. This is a time where <laughs> social media cannot be your comparison uh, benchmark. This is a time where you must sit down to start to understand things by yourself, for yourself, where you are headed, what you want to do, how you want to get there. 
this is a time where we have to work on self-confidence more than ever before. And as you can see on my screen, I said, whatever it is, define your own glamour. The society cannot continue, or the social media cannot continue to tell you what is right or what is wrong. You may glean from people. Social media cannot continue to glamorize the wrong things. And you're, you're bearing the brunt. For one, because I coach people and I counsel people and I consult for a lot of people, I know that this pressure is real. Oh, this person has just bought a house, this person has just bought a car. This is, this is, this is. Hey, calm down. Like they say, eh? men is in faces. I mean, life is in faces, right? I'm not here to give you motivational stuff, but hey, even if it is motivational, take what works for you. Because if you continue to allow yourself to be inundated by what you see, you will burn out. Define what is glamour. Define what is com uh, comfort. Define what is wealth for yourself, for your family. Define what is enough. Deny, define what is, what is adequate, what is abundance. And don't let anybody define it for you. So this game of money in a time where everybody is complaining, you decide. When the, the guy, this kind of work, you're taking an additional work, it's beneath you. That, that's their own definition. What, what works for you? Do you think at this point in time you need to de, de, you need to take an additional work? Do you, do you need to take an additional source of income? Do you need to partner with people? Do you need to go back to school? Do you need to go back to the drawing board? Do you think you need to dust some of your skills? And because uh, my friend will say you have gone back to it. so 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 what? Ah, you are going to learn sewing. So what? You are doing addressing. So what? This game has become highly personal and highly personalized. Well, I know they say that I don't think, don't, don't think things personally. But this money game, you've got to take it personally. At the Smart Stewards Inner Circle, uh, the organizers of this program, by the way, we read a book. Um, was it this month or last month? the psychology of money. And I am encouraging everybody to go get that book, right? The psychology of wealth, but the psychology of money. That psychology of money, go and read it and just sit down with it. I'm like, what, what do I want? Define your own glamour. Define anything that it is you want and go for it. Define what is glitz, what is glamour, what is, you know, like I already said, and don't be inundated by what, ever anybody is doing. If weaving your hair is what works right now because you want to achieve your goals, go for it, darling. If changing your children's school fees is what gives, I mean, school right now because of the school fees is what works for you, please do it. If you have to work around things, if you have to readjust, let Shay, this meeting is for us to bear our minds, Abby. I will expose myself as well. Um, for the past two or two and a half years, usually because of the nature of my work, I will get someone to come and cook for me. So I will send someone to mile 12, then we will do ball cooking. And not because I cannot cook over, ah, sisters, we know our strength. We know what we like. So I love cooking, but there's no time. But one thing I never want to find myself in is for me to look into the freezer. I, uh, stew is finished. Meat, no. So I, I bulk shop, bulk cook, especially when you have younger children. There are some things you must always have in your fridge or freezer. So I would usually call someone, oh yeah, bulk cook. We cook the whole day. I'm there, but in and out, right? But I'm home. And then we cook, 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 cook. I pay the person. Ah. This year, have I done it? Yes, I've done it once. I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. It's not because I want to take the livelihood from somebody. I'm still going to call her for something I'm doing later. But all of this, we are not doing anything. We just want to cook in the fridge. I have a house up who is very, very hardworking. What is stopping me? My sisters, the last two ball cooking, I have done it with joy and with enough happiness. Like, I can't just complain. See, that extra money, I can give it out, 
Oh, I can use it for something. I'm just like, so those who know me and those who know that I would usually invite somebody to cook for me. If they see me cooking, if you see me cooking, more cook, no, is it a bad thing to cook? I'm not supposed to cook, cook by myself. So I'm just saying that ladies, this is, this is a time to just readjust, to review, to sort of declutter, to sort of look inwards, because we have a goal. And like I said earlier, and don't forget, the economy, global economy, all of these money issues, fiscal policies, monetary policies, they are inanimate. What does that mean? They don't have life like we have life. We, we are gods, we are kings. These things cannot continue to inundate us. We must win this money game. Somebody asked me, you go to my favorite restaurant in New York. I said, I cook. Thank you. Now, I'm not trying to say um, uh, live cheap. Or, let, that's not even for tonight. Even if I say so, I'm just saying, please, ladies, look inwards. Adjust. Two or three weeks ago, I, I, I sent an email to my mastermind. I was, you know, telling them this story. I was looking through my wardrobe like, ah, let me just even rearrange. My sisters, the things that I would have bought for maybe an event, I saw them I'm like, gosh, these things have been here. We are decluttering, checking. Check your wardrobe again before you buy the next clothes. Check your shoe rack again. Eh? They said we have to wear red. We have to wear red. Ah. These days, you have to buy red shoe, red gilly, red everything. Auntie, you're on your own. This game is, now we must define what we want, define what works for us, irrespective of whatever anybody is saying. Let me move on to the next point. Goals. Close to what I just explained. Your goals are personal. You decide the goalpost. If this goal post is too narrow, expand. If it is too wide, constrict, <laughs> right? Do not let anyone, do not let anyone decide your life and your goals for you. And see, this is women only, and we've got to say these things. We tension ourselves unknowingly. We allow ourselves to be tensioned as well. Ha, look at what they are wearing. Hey, this is what they are doing. It has got to stop. If you can't do gold and silver, original, do accessories. My, my God, God bless manufacturers. They come out with a lot of, even, <laughs> forgive me, all of these designer bags that we see. Do you know there are, there are copies that look, see, I'm not teaching you to be cheap. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that. If your truth is in that bag, you can't afford the original. Hey, get the copy for now. You can't afford the original. I won't say fake it till you make it. I'm just saying, hey, give yourself peace. Allow yourself to have peace. Goals, set your own goals. There are three types of financial goals you should have. Short-term goals are things you want to do. Short-term, mid-term, like one year. Mid-term goals are things you want to do within three to five years. And of course, long-term goals. Please set your goals with your own spouse, with your own. If you're not married, set your goals by yourself. Do not allow what you see on social media make you move the goal post all the time. Some of us, we don't know what we want. So when you see this, ah, okay, that's, that's the next thing I'm going to do. You've got to be securing yourself, securing your plans, securing your goals, securing your future. Because that is one of the things this year is teaching us. Right? Before you be, if I don't go to America, America is where it is. UK is where it is. God is everywhere. It is anywhere at this point because everybody's like, what is happening around the world? Right? So if you are cut off for relocation, go for it, but not because you are pressured to do it. Are you getting something? Somebody said, all this cuckoo vanity. Oh my God. Vanity of a vanity. God is everywhere. <laughs> Wherever you find yourself. Right. If I will go a bit spiritual on you, I remember, you know, I was sharing with my, uh, in church today, I led the opening prayers for my subunit. And I'm like, see, we have to know what God wants for us, what we want for ourselves. And we must personalize these things. Remember, in the time of Abraham, there was famine. 
God had told him, leave your father's house. And he left his father's house, right? But that was not even when the famine started. It was after he left his father's house, then there was famine. He didn't hear, whether I heard, God, well, God didn't tell him, the Bible didn't record that God told him to go to Egypt or not. Isha went to Egypt. When he went to Egypt, what happened? He had to lie that Sarah was, was his wife. In the process, he accumulated a lot of wealth until they caught him. And what happened with his wealth? They chased him, he carried his wealth. But for his son, Isaac, God said, do not what? Do not make the mistake of going to Egypt. And he didn't go. And the Bible says in that year, he sold a hundred, he sold and ripped what? A hundredfold. For Jacob, by mistake, by error, he found himself, himself in the house of labor. And what happened? He became rich. It was a long process, but he became rich. There was famine too. And of course, Joseph, the most beloved, was there famine or not? There was famine. For each of them, there were either direct instructions, but their paths were largely different and personalized. If Isaac had said, I must go to Egypt because the bulk of my father's initial wealth was gotten from Egypt. If he had gone there, what would have happened? This is a year, this is a season, this is a time where you must be firm with your commitments. You must be clear. If you are not clear, keep, keep moving. Clarity comes with momentum. You will become clear. But for you to now say, I want to do it because my friend did it, you can't afford to take chances this year. You can't just follow people because you can follow people into a pit. And this has to do with so many things, not just relocation. I'm not anti-relocation. If you have been called to relocate, go, please, immediately. After this, go, go, and buy, go and start the process. But if you are not called to relocate, wherever you are, be there. Right. Why did I even go into that? Let's go on. The third G, glitches. Let me tell you, there's no life. There's no career. There's no family. There's no sojourn without glitches. Remember, I'm sharing the Gs for this season. There'll be glitches. In my life, let me be frank with you. I don't think I have been challenged in career and in business as much as this year has, has been for me. Right? I have. Adenika says this is the reason you went there, my sister. It says, well, why? Many things have been happening. Those who are close to me know. Like, I will get emails, coach, how you, how you, you know, faring, what has been happening. Sorry, God is in the midst of it all. I'm like, ah, when did I become born again? Maybe about 20, 26 years ago or so. I am not sure I have my, my faith has been tested as much as 2022 has done, has done for me or as, as you know, happy things that have happened. There'll be glitches, but we must encourage ourselves. We must keep going because you can't, Bible says we are not of them that drop back to perdition. You can't just say, okay, I haven't come this far. I'm not doing, if you're not doing it again, what do you want to do? End your life, lie, lie, you go to all fire. Just give it all up, right? All of these people that I just mentioned, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, did they not face challenges? They did. And you know what? The beauty of our lives, the beauty of our sojourn, the beauty of our stories are in the challenges that we overcome. So I look at my life, I'm like, okay, this may be a very tough year, but have I faced challenges in, in prior years? Yes, now, this one. Uh, how did I go? Dead, it looked like everything was going to collapse, but I, I, I made it. Oh, that one, yeah, oh. So I sit myself down and I go through and I, I, I remind myself of the victories and it gives me momentum to go ahead. So ladies, I know there are people here, investments, you invested money and it looks like nothing is happening. Hey, have I lost my money? Calm down, glitches. Things will happen to shake you. You will come out of it. Money will come back. Life will continue. And then you will go to the next thing and to the next thing and to the next thing. And it will all become, ah, when that one happened, what's life without glitches or challenges? Let me move on to the next one. Yes, this one, very important. This year, as much as this year will try us, 
grills and frills. What does that mean? Cut yourself some slack. Enjoy yourself in the process. Don't get inundated. Somebody who is on this call gave me this dress I am wearing in church today. In fact, I wish you could see. It's very nice. One day I will take a picture with it. Let me adjust myself very well. She's watching this. Thank you, my darling, for giving me this. Before, as they have given me that dress, it's going to the one corner of my wardrobe where I have new things. And then maybe I won't get to it in like, I'm not exaggerating, one year or one and a half years. I was 42 years ago and my inner circle members gave me a whole lot, 40 gifts. <sighs> Let me make an open confession. I've been complaining that my natural hair hasn't grown in a long time. And then Asha was one day, Asha, okay, I will rearrange, okay, these things are there. Ah, these things are there. Sha, this year I said, this is the year to unbundle. So I brought out those natural hair products. I will take them to the salon. And since I started to use them, I have seen a whole lot of difference. These things have been in my household almost two years ago, June 2020. Eh? I'm being vulnerable to you. He said, no, when things are better, I will, um, will, in fact, when I have a very important party, that's when I will wear the clothes. Uh, um, in fact, I, I need to take myself for massage. Maybe I will win a, get, a, a, a giveaway. Uh, maybe um, coach, coach will announce another giveaway. Uh, don't wait for giveaways. Give things away for yourself. Grills and frills. Hmm, yes, Messiah, all those plays that you put on that, one day, one day, they will break. They will break. If you don't use them, wear and tear will happen. All those bags. Ladies, what, what happened with your shoes during COVID? For those overseas, maybe you weren't affected, but the shoes I threw away after COVID because of the humid weather of Nigeria. Do I have a weakness in the house? Hmm. All of those things will keep, 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 keep. They gave me today, I wear it today. After today, I will dry clean, I keep it again. Another time, I wear it again. This week, they gave me. Before, then I said, oh, well, let me put it in the night. All of the new things that you have in here, when are you using them? More than ever before, ladies, this year, if you don't take care of your mental health, if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't prioritize self-care, this year will try you. Isn't that right? This year is trying us. So if you've got to cut yourself some slack from time to time, encourage yourself and just sometimes just take yourself. Coffee shop. Oh, yeah. How much is it? 2000 two five. One cup of coffee. Yes, I will take it. Sometimes just, just do something for yourself. Just, just prioritize your, your mental health, your emotional health. And just, just do something for yourself, ladies, this year. This very, very amazing year. And that's why I said, grills and frills. Allow yourself. Allow yourself to fly. Allow yourself to enjoy. Eh? Allow me to enjoy myself. There's a song like that, Abby. That song just popped up in my mind. Allow me to enjoy my... Yeah, I love it, Binik. Every Sunday, she's always giving us pictures of the new clothes she's wearing. I love it. Eh? You are not tensioning anybody. You are just giving glory to God. And that's why I said you can't allow social media to dictate, oh, right? Hey, this person's wedding. Hey, celebrate. Look at the styles. Hey, where will I get there? Allow yourself to enjoy yourself, sisters. So problem, no, they finish. As they say, give yourself a treat. It's a Hello, can we still hear her? 
Okay, no. I was going to ask if I'm the only one who cannot hear coach. Oh, okay. uh, apologies, people. I'm sure she's going to come back right. Um, let's give her a few seconds. I'm sure she'll be back shortly. Um, so let me just check in our work. Okay, I'm sure that's the network and she's going to be back shortly. Um, apologies, people. So I, I saw some people asking for the link to the Smart Awards in that circle. I dropped the link at the comment session. Um, yes. Can you see it? There's a link to everyone, yes. Um, this must be network fighting this enjoyment conversation. I apologize. Um, sorry for that glitch. Was I talking on glitch? No. Can you still hear me? Yes, All we right. can. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I really, really apologize. Um, the inverter was off and then everything just... Um, so let me try and quickly, quickly wrap up on this. So I was talking about grills and frills and I think I have said so much already. Okay, grills and frills, cut yourself some, some slack. How many, how many Fs, uh, Gs have we discussed? Four. The next one, this year, you need your girls. You need to be intentional about your relationships. <laughs> Ladies, you need the right people to encourage you. You need to be in the midst of the right people you need to be the right person yourself. You need to encourage yourself and move. You know, the Bible says, I'm sorry if you are not a person of faith, I'm a person of faith. Um, you, so I will go religious on you from time to time. He says in the multitude of counsel, there's what? the safety. This is not a time where the only set of people that you have around your life are people always complaining, who are always grumbling, who are always comparing. We have a family friend. Every time he comes to our house and he sees something, he's always saying, oh, hey, that's my other friend. In fact, this is the way he does it. So I'm like, what? You know, I just thought it was just a one-off thing. But every time, 
and I you, I don't need you in my life. Or either I just correct it and just say, you know what, I really don't appreciate. This is a time that, this is a year where you must be intentional about what you are allowing in your life, who you are allowing, the kind of people you are moving with. And I'm not joking. At some point, Lot had to be what? Separated from Abraham. It's not, no need to be sentimental. You don't need additional baggage. The year already is a, is a heavy baggage. You know, people that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my friend, eh, you haven't seen me. Yeah, you did not call me. Is it because you have other friends? Yeah, is it because you have a new job? Is it because you have relocated? Leave them. I believe they have, all have things to face. If any of my friends is complaining that they are not hearing from me this time, and I'm like, ah, she, she's not even, is it because she, she, she's not, ah, you don't know, you are not in my shoes. You can't even walk in my shoes. And I can't walk in yours. Be intentional. Surround yourself with people who would encourage you, who would hold you up in prayers, who would challenge you, and be the same. Don't be parasitic. Let your relationships be mutually beneficial. Let it be symbiotic. Feed off one another. And also assess your relationships. If you say that you are the one always receiving, move things around. At point, some point I did like an introspection. I realized that I, have, I had a friend who was always giving to me, giving, I'm like, ah, this is not nice. So I moved things around. I'm like, before she gives, I give. Give counsel. Don't see, this year is not a year where you are complaining. She did not look for me. Look for people. These people are going through a lot. Okay, on the group, she's not freaking because are, she's not talking. She, she's she's proud now because she has relocated. Ah, you to relocate and let's see if you'll be contributing on the group. Girls, do I need to talk more about it? We all know. We all know our new nuances. We all know the things that you know we get agitated over. We know the things that we complain about. Let's stop it. You are not hearing for someone. Look for them. Somebody delaying in payment before you jump into conclusions and you're starting to report them to the whole world, have a word with them. Empathy is the word this year. But beyond it, be intentional about those in your life. If somebody is seeming to be an extra luggage, have a comment. I'm not saying drop or dump. I'm saying talk with them, have a conversation, decide. If I have told you once or twice that, that's not the issue. You say I'm not looking for you. I mean, not any problem. I don't have problem, but me too. I'm dealing with a lot. You have complained once, twice, three times. Kilo day. You want to kill me, Auntie? Move. Right. Have the right girls in your life. Number six. Give and giving. Now I am sharing specific tips for this very peculiar year. Now maybe two years ago I said give and giving. We know it is good to give. There is more pleasure to give than to receive, but I'm saying in the midst of it, this is not the, the year to say, get all you can, then can all you get. People need help. I mean, we went out to, to, to visit our first son in school today and as we we're coming back, so a woman, good looking, begging. I said, my, I asked my husband, I said, well, what would make this kind of a person looking like this beg? Eh? As much as I don't like people begging, but I just had this empathy feeling just sweep through my mind. Like people are going through a lot of people are on the same salary. We are talking about inflation. You have family people, family guys earning 25,000, they have four children. How? Please, anything you are not using, in whatever way you can be a blessing to people, be a blessing to people. And also be open to receiving. Let me tell you something. I'm being vulnerable. Earlier today in church, I was like, okay, my birthday is in three weeks. But this year, I go. I, I, I just want to be by myself. In fact, nobody should come and do, give me anything or do it. Ah, I just caught myself. I'm like, hey, hey, no, 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 no. Ah, I am open to everything the universe has for me. I immediately, like, I won't allow my feeling stop what God has in store for me. Hey, no, no, no. Instantly. It was a, instantly. I nipped it in the bud. I am open to everything the universe has for me. I am open to all the blessings that will come my way. And this is what we should do on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't allow your, your emotions, you know, overwhelm you. 
He said, come and take some. I'm not even in the mood. I don't know. Instantly, I said, you know what? This year, will Feelings cannot get the best of me. Are you with me? Are you learning something? And then the final G before we go into a, a whatever, the God factor. Do I? We went to church today, Abby. So I don't need to explain. God here yeah, is the Baba final G, the most important G. The most important. It is really, really important. Ladies, I hope you have learned a thing or two. I am going to, I, I have a few other things. We will come back to that. But let me stop sharing. And now let us go into the, into the gist. Like, what are the things we are facing? How can we navigate? What we have done tonight is we have somebody who is a business owner. Um, thank you. What immediate switch is that? Thank you. I yes, immediate switch. That's the word. Switch, like catch, catch the thought before it sinks. Like, eh, eh, eh. I do that a lot. Self-awareness. Eh, bad day. Nobody should come and give me, like, yeah, they will give me, I will receive. Catch it. Uh -huh. that's, that's the way to go this year and, and every day. So we have somebody who is in business. We have somebody who is an employee. Uh, we have somebody who lives overseas. So we will allow you to drop your questions. I will um, ask questions so that we can touch on different things and how they affect us and how we can navigate you know, this year and win big. Have you learned anything so far? Oh yeah, give me high five or give yourselves high five if you have learned anything. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, encourage somebody. Say something nice to somebody in the comments. Say, yes, I have learned. If your own is binding that thing that is always you know, telling you, you are not deserving. Today I tweeted, I am deserving of every good thing. I am deserving of every good thing. I am deserving of every good thing, right? So I am spotlighting some people now and I will uh, quickly do some intros and then this conversation is about to be sweet. Get coffee, more coffee, more, more tea, biscuits, right? Uh, I am, PM, I can't see you, where are you? Uh, please raise your hand, PM. I cannot see you. Uh, one minute. Is your video on, though? Yes, it is. Okay. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Okay, I see you. So yes, this conversation is about to go to another level. The first one is what is just a teaser. This is the main conversation. So um, tonight, um, apart from all of the things that we have shared, that I have shared, I want to also extend you know, uh, the stage. I want to share the stage with these beautiful ladies so that we can learn from one another and see how we can all navigate this year together and learn from their experiences. In no particular order, I'm just going to announce their names, introduce them very briefly um, as I see them on the, on the stage, and then I will start to throw questions. Uh, let me introduce Miriam Sanusi. Uh, Miriam is a fantastic, very fantastic lady that I met late last year, right? Um, she's a business owner, she's an entrepreneur. Uh, she's somebody I admire so much. I admire her humility, her drive. Every time she's speaking, she's like, ah, me and my husband, we have planned it. If it is not in the budget, I'm like, ah, I love this energy. If it's not in the budget, we are not going to, I love it. And she's so full of life. It was her birthday last week. Uh, yesterday, she hosted us, and it was just a very beautiful event. So, Miriam, uh, welcome. I will also ask you to unmute yourself. But, but just stay, uh, yeah, just stay muted. Um, also on my screen, by their lipstick and their frames, you shall know them. It's a combination of white and red. You see, you see that contrast. That's what makes life like beautiful. Even if you are not seeing her face, like you are seeing the glasses, 
and you are seeing the lipstick. Like, give it to them. 2022, you've got nothing on us. Um, I love you, Olua Busayo, all the way from Canada. Uh, she's a member of the Smart Stewards Inner Circle, just like Miriam. Uh, Busayo lives in Canada, like I said. And um, she's still very in tune with what is happening in Nigeria. I, I love her drive. I love her energy. She's on social media. She's sharing. I think uh, a while ago, she started what you call Chronicles of... Um, you, you talk to us. Briefly introduce yourself when, you know, I ask you a particular question. So uh, Busaya is streaming. Olua Busaya is streaming in from Canada. And she will talk to us about life overseas and how to navigate this, this season. Also on my screen is uh, my very beautiful, wonderful sister, supportive, my friend. There's nothing I have done in this life that she has not signed up for. I do cause she's there. Mastermind, she's there. Program, she's there. We have been through thick and thin together, right? Uh, she, she's a banker. She's a bank manager. So you see, we have entrepreneurs. We have um, um, employees. Those who are on salary, consistent salary. Those who are not on salary. Those who are business owners. Those who are just navigating, you know, just to have a balance to the conversation. Naomi Oseha Ebose. Welcome. She's also a member of the Smart Towards Inner Circle. She's a member of the Mastermind. She, like I said, she has done everything I have ever rolled out. And then, of course, uh, the last but not the least on, on the screen, she's a project, no, sorry, programs manager for the Smart Towards Inner Circle. Uh, she's a team member at Smart Towards. She has been following me, working with me for a couple of years, but what she doesn't know is that I have also be, been following her and learning from her indirectly. She said, hey, Kato. But I love her energy. She has a clothing brand. And this lady, is, in fact, even before I thought about having a board of advisory, an, an advisory board, board of advisors for my company, was when she wrote me many years ago that, Ma, can you be on the board? I'm like, this girl knows where she's going, right? Uh, we've done amazing things together and we are still going very far. Um, so all of you, yeah, your people, see, see people hailing you. Audio is low, okay? Is audio low, ladies? Is my audio low? Okay. All right, so um, panelists, you, are, you have to be on permanent on mute, right? So if you have any reason to mute yourself, just mute yourself and then we will turn you on so that I don't have to start saying, or maybe I should make you, no, I don't want to distract you. Just keep yourself. Um, uh -huh, mommy, daddy, Shateri. That's why we don't want to keep them muted. <laughs> All right, but if you need to mute yourself, you know, just mute yourself and then we will unmute you. Right. Okay, so ladies, um, as soon as I ask you a particular question, quickly tell us what you do and then dive into the question so that people can get to know you better. Where do I start from? Hmm. Let me start from Miriam. Um, Miriam, you are a business owner. You are an entrepreneur. You run a startup business. You leverage technology. And uh, you've been in business for, I don't know how long you will tell us. In the midst of all that we have seen in 2022, how have you navigated your finances, family finances, personal finances, business finance. How have you stayed afloat? How have you survived? And not only survived, how have you thrived? How have you remained sane as a business owner? Go for it. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity. In fact, when you were speaking, I was taking notes because you literally, it's almost like um, instinctively, I was, I've been doing almost everything that you listed out. And one of the things, the first note I took was that passing the energy of fear. So one of the first things I did for myself this year, I started last year, was to be very intentional about my circle. You know, when we were at the launch at Radisson Blue, I was vulnerable. I told everyone at the table that I'm looking to make new friends. I'm looking to build a new community. I want people that can encourage me you know, and so that has really helped me, like even on my, in my, on my social media feed, 
I've muted people that won't add anything to my life or to my mind. You know, when you wake up in the morning, if you are very disciplined, you read your Bible first. But let me be very honest. I most likely open Instagram first, right? But when I open Instagram, the, what I see is usually edifying. The people on my timeline edify me. So I tr I've tried so much to basically control my mind. You understand? Yesterday she spoke about I had a get together. It was a very intentional birthday party. Every single person in that room was were people I look up to, people I admire, people I want to be like, maybe in their marriages, in their businesses. I was very intentional. I, in fact, I offended a lot of people because people that were hoping I would invite them. I knew why. I didn't want anybody that would come and be looking like, ah, ah, what's going on? You know, I didn't want that. But that doesn't mean, like she said, that doesn't mean I caught people off. So the first thing I've done so far to just not lose my mind is to surround myself with people, um, content, anything that would build my mind and just keep me focused. Because the reality is, as much as we are saying that um, things are hard, believe me, people are making money in this Lagos. There is money. Ah, there is money. Forget it. I've seen, like, I've seen money. And I'm like, you know, they say, why well, don't they see this money? You know, there is money in this Lagos. So I, I want to be among those people that are seeing that money, that this inflation is, I'm, I mean, I'm fortunate, you know, I'll open up. So we earn in dollars in our family. So whether dollar goes up, we'll change in the black market rates. Whether it goes down, we, so it, to be very honest and fair, it hasn't really affected us. But even then, we are still very conscious about budgeting and buying things on need basis. I don't buy a dress ahead of a, of an event. I don't buy it in anticipation that, oh, if I'm going to have an event, I'll wear the dress. No, when I need, I don't buy, if I see a red dress, no matter how much I like it, I wait until the day I know I'm going to need a red dress. If I know I'm going to, if maybe Auntie Shola invites me for a party now to say we, the, the theme is red, I will use this week to look for red dress. But I'm not going to buy red dress a month ago and keep it waiting for when there will be a red dress think party. So I think that for that one, I've mastered it. And then I switched from, um, I, I, I switched from buying like just accessories, you know, for buying sake to, I'm saying what I, what I, what I was discussing with one of my friends yesterday, I said, instead of buying five, ex, five expensive accessories, I will join that money together and buy one gold. I know that gold will appreciate. So if you can afford it, instead of buying just, you know, you want to wear all the latest accessories, gather the money, you know, buy one. Nobody, nobody's going to beat me for wearing the same earrings every day or every, like, I don't think people remember. If you go, if you go somewhere, I don't think people remember like, oh, ah, nice dress. They move on. Everybody's so busy. I don't think anybody remembers what I wore last week, last week, Sunday. Like people move on, you know? So that's another thing I've done to personally, like stay afraid and I, and she knows me and budgeting I'm, when I was going to join Smart Stewards, I waited to the next month. I told uh, Jamal, I said, sorry, it's not, it's not in the budget this month. Next month, I'll put it in the budget and I'll join. And I did as I promised, you know. Then for business, what I've done personally, my business kind of suffered a little bit because we do sourcing. I run a business called Trade Center. We help people source for products from Lagos Island. Things, prices of things are very expensive. People are trying to, are just trying to eat. So for the kind of people we serve, because we help drop shippers, to, we have people who do drop shipping to fulfill their um, um, orders, you know. And even the drop shippers are struggling because they are, their target customers can barely afford to eat. So they're not looking to buy fashion dresses for 13K, 15K. But unfortunately, that's the price of things up there. So I had to make a tough decision. I sat down, looked around me, what do I have? I have access to someone who runs a mechanized abattoir. So I decided to go into the meat business. I'm going to be selling meat. People, everybody eats meat. I have access to this person. He has a mechanized abattoir. I just need to buy a refrigerator and keep there and I can be running my business from there. I pivot and I can still, it doesn't stop me from still running my sourcing business. Pending when things get better and we get begin to receive Orders more. So basically, you have to be flexible and practical. Yes, God gave. I, I don't. I, I personally don't believe God gives anybody a vision to do only one business. One particular is clothing business. I feel God can give you a vision to do business, but any business, say whatever we put our hands to do, prosper. Say whatever, whatsoever. 
what you just have to decide that this is the one I want to put my hands to do and it will prosper and if, and if you need to pivot you know be very flexible that that's it for me like I don't I don't hold on to things but at the same time I'm, I'm also not fickle so you have to know, you know, it's a very practical decision. You have to look at it. How much you like putting into marketing to make more money? How many, you do, you do your unit economics. How many of these products, how many others do I have to fulfill? To get back my marketing money, to get back my, I break everything. I do, I'm very, I'm very big on unit economics, you know? And if it's not making sense, I will hold it off. I like, I, I will let go. There is no shame. You can say, hey, uh, this is your business. You started this. No, no, no. You've dropped it. And um, no problem. Except if you want to be an angel investor, I want to come and dash me money. I'll take. But basically, I'm very practical about it. And Tishola, you've covered everything. You've covered everything. But the number one thing for me, I won't lie, because when the devil wants to attack me, it's my mind. Like my mind, I have a very um I don't know if it's a gift, like I, I'm very sensitive. I can, I can tell, I can read people. I can see through people. I can like, it's a gift. So I'm very careful with my mind. It, yeah, the devil can literally get me with my mind. So I'm very um, intentional about that. So speckle of friends, smart stewards. Um, in fact, uh, there are still, there are some people I've already marked to do lunch with, you know, here and there To I saw one of the ladies uh, in church, the lady that has twins. I saw her in church today. I had to go and say hello to her where she was before please, I left. Please her. invite me for the lunch, oh. Ah, I you, you, you are my neighbor. I can just walk into your house and come and call her. Hey, let me even say this. So if you have access to certain people, take advantage of it. She knows now. Just come and use it her smile just to greet her. And I'll just collect one, <laughs> pick one or two things. But like she said, I can't continue um, receiving from, I already have plans on how to give back. So I'm going to discuss that with you. I already said I was going to discuss it with you. I can't keep taking, you know, from you. I have access, but I'm not going to abuse it. So I think that's that's basically that's 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 been it basically for me. Like I said, make sure you don't engage in conversations where people are saying, are saying things are hard. I say when everyone says there's a casting down. We will say there is a lifting up. I, I don't apologize for being spiritual. Please, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll quote my Bible. Go to your Quran if you want to. You know. <laughs> thank you. I, I'm still going to come back to you, but yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. One yeah. thing I am taking out of your conversation or your 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 comments or your points. Number one is that it is abundantly available. Does not mean you should just spend it or just waste it anyhow. You know, some of us, because we have it, I will dip my hand into it. And it could be anything. It could be access. It could be money. Right. Remember where she started from? We are not exactly affected, but it didn't mean that I could join the inner circle immediately. There's a budget. There's a plan. And we will work with it. By the way, for those who are asking, uh, interestingly, I mean, all of the people on screen, and members of the Smart Stewards Inner Circle. So um, for, for those who have, I mean, this is your first time of listening in to any of our programs. Uh, we are Smart Stewards, a financial literacy platform operating out of Nigeria. And we have different arms. We have the Smart Investment Club, Smart Stewards Junior Club, the Smart Stewards Academy. But this particular program is being powered by the Smart Stewards Inner Circle. And what it means is what it means, Inner Circle. Women who are looking to be mentored, not just by one person, not just by me, but you know, by themselves, right? So we, we encourage peer mentoring where we mentor one another. We encourage the regular mentoring where I or other coaches mentor the other people. And we also encourage re reverse mentoring where the younger people also mentor, you know, those who are older than them. What do we do? We do once a month coaching call like this. Uh, we we get emails. We call them letters from the safe, right? Every Sunday. Today, there's no email. Oh, this is the email, eh? right? But we do. But I will still send something. You know what? I'm the queen of consistency. I won't miss today. And then we do, we have accountability groups. Um, to be honest, yeah, a few glitches here and there, but the essence of accountability groups, you know, cannot be uh, overemphasized in a season like this. You need those two, three, four people who are praying with you. I have a mastermind accountability group, just four of us. In the last one year or more, 
We have been praying every Tuesday morning. We have never missed it. I am in London, though. You are in Italy, oh, we must pray that prayer, 5.30. We must, we have not missed it. Even if it is two or one, yeah, at least two people out of the four people. We need those things right now. I see somebody saying we didn't receive safe code. This one is safe, but I will still send you something nonetheless, right? So at the inner circle, we provide you accountability, women only. We provide you um, the coaching calls, not just on finance. Not just on the, finance. the inner circle is for different things, mentoring on life, marriage. We have a one year uh, curriculum and we run in cycles, cycles of three months. So right now, this is May, right? We are going into June. If you join us, we'll give you bonus of June for in addition to the new quarter. A BPF, right? We can do that. I so they have a that bonus. Um, she has already <laughs> sent a link. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> we, uh, she has sent out a link explaining how you can join. It's 50,000 per annum, which is small. We really need to change it. And per cycle, I think it's 15K or something. You know, so you can share if you want. Come and bring bring your yeah, sauce. Come and add your sauce to our add. own sauce. And let's 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 enjoy. Let's let's go through this year. Let's go through life together. Let's encourage ourselves. Um, across the board. So I, I I needed to quickly explain that for those who are asking what it is. Please follow us on our social media pages as well. Smart Stewards on Instagram. If you like to follow me as well, Shola and Oscar But beyond that, we have a Facebook group for women. We're about five thousand women. Please join that as well. You know, we want to take these conversations um, further and just be vulnerable. And um, Miriam, thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for sharing, you know, some of those things. So our people who know that, hey, we are not here to play. Let me go on to Oluwa Busaya. So I will come back to you, Miriam. Thank you. Oluwa Busaya lives in Canada. Um, I, I love her energy. Canada is not even on the same time zone like UK. There are some people who have located to UK. We we'll send them message, they won't reply till two days after. But there is a Olua Busayo is in Canada and she's, I, I love her energy. She's on the group, she's contributing, she's on social media. I think she still runs Nigerian schedule. Hey, right? Like she's she's literally responsive. I, I feel she'll still here. She's been gone for about three or four years. I'm right. Now, Olua Busayo, you're in Canada and a whole lot has been happening around the world, right? Um, what would you say to those in the diaspora? And what would you say to those who are looking to relocate? And who, what would you say to those who do not have to relocate but are under pressure to relocate? How are you navigating the economic um, conditions? What are some of the things you would share with us for starters? Thank you. Thank you so much, Kush. Thanks, thanks so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Good afternoon, sisters. So my name is Busayo. I'm in the AML space, and some money laundry space. I work, I'm passionate about fighting financial crimes. I see myself as a superhero trying to make the world a better place. Now, that being said, one of the things that I believe will help us to navigate in this um, climb and anywhere we find ourselves is networking. This is what I've been able to, you know, leverage on and it has really, really worked for me. Like, there's no way I talk about networking that I don't share the story of how I got my jobs. Like my first job was done a very big American consulting firm. And right now I'm working with one of the big four in North America. Now how did I get the first one? Somebody, like, like coach said, when I'm in a group, I try to contribute. I'm not a silent person. So in this particular group, somebody was asking a question, asking about us to share our experiences with job searching as new immigrants. I call myself an adult immigrant. So I shared my experience. You know, I answered, the person was just asking. So I answered the person, I shared my experience. And I wrote that there, I said, PS, I'm still looking for opportunities. Then somebody now sent me a private message and say, oh, what field are you in? I said, I'm in the AML space. I said, oh, okay. There's one company I know that they are recruiting. Let me give you this email. Send this so -so -so email. Told me the email to send to that person. And, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. And that was how I got the job. And usually, most companies, they're always asking for um, Canadian experience. Either you are
Okay, I stopped hearing her. Is that from us? Is it me? We can't hear you, Busaya. Mm. Hold on. Uh, let me mute you and ask you to unmute again. Okay, please unmute yourself. Okay. Can you, is it better? Yes. Now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. So I, I was sharing how I got my first job. Like somebody asked a question in the WhatsApp group. Typical of me, I responded, you know, I responded in a very lengthy manner. I said, yes, I am still looking for opportunities. And another person DM me that, oh, what field are you in? I said, I'm in AML space. So, you know, she gave me an email address. So I sent this person an email. They are looking for an AML analyst in this company. And that was how I got my first um, job, through the power of networking. Then it got to, then after about a couple of months, I felt, oh, I needed to change. I needed to change. As I've gotten like the experience, I wanted to acquire this company. I needed to move on. So of course, I'll be emailing people. So hello, I just want to say hello. Can we have a coffee? Can we have coffee chat? Can we do this? And if you know the kind of person I am, I'm not. I'm not just an extroverted person. Like it's really going out of my way. So one day, I sent an, I sent a message to somebody I had met about maybe like three years ago. But I was always keeping in touch with that person. Is a partner in the company and our work. And I just said, oh hello. So, okay, what I do is this, anytime I see any progress, maybe a made partner, a promotion, I will say congratulations and keep swearing, you know, all those kind of things. Then that day, I just sent me a message on a Friday. I said, oh, hi, Ramsey, how are you doing? I'm going to check in on you. I use the pandemic, hope you are doing great. And I now said, it calls me Olu. He said, oh, Olu, I'm fine. How are you? Oh, by the way, we have an opportunity on my team. Would you be interested? I said, wow, of course, why wouldn't I be interested? <laughs> and, you know, the following, they said, okay, let's open a call. So he booked a team's call and not. He said, well, what's your experience? And the funny thing is this, all the things he was asking me, oh, have you done this? Have you done strategy? Have you done I said, no, no, no. He said, but you know what? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll teach you, we'll teach you, we'll teach you. So basically everything he wanted me to know, I, I needed for that role. I didn't have it. You know, I said, okay, you know, I'm going to set up an interview. So, so the HR called me, they set up interview with about five different people. I did five different stages of interview. And then I got the job. They sent me offer letter. And after I got the offer letter, I think on Friday, I see the call from HR. They said, oh, we are going to send you a link. You need to apply for the job, you know, formally and all that. That's, so that to be on the record that you apply for the job, for the role. I said, oh, that's fine. Now, what am I trying to say is this networking. If you, if you, if you want to... My great, yeah, even in Nigeria, this working is important. So they can't say, oh, I'm very shy. I don't like talking to people. That's me. I don't like talking. But in, when I'm in a group, I am there. You know, I'm there. I contribute as well. I don't just say, oh, you know, I bring, I bring IAGs, but I also bring meaningful gist. When people ask questions, respond. When people want, and you know, when they have an opinion or something, oh, you could say, oh, I don't know, but this person may know. You know, like somebody was asking on a group, oh, um, does anybody live in this area? So I responded to myself, oh, I don't live in the area, but I know this person does, reach out to this person, you know? You could be like um, a resource. You could be a resourceful person. Even if you don't have the resource to channel, you could point um, the person to, you know, to um, where the person may get the help. And that's one thing that has really, really helps me. You know, networking, you network, and you don't, when you might, for people that want to migrate, don't say, oh, I'm only going to gravitate towards the people of my skin pigmentation. Of course, I, I belong to various Nigerian WhatsApp groups, but if you know me in my office, I have friends that are from South Africa, that are from India, that are Canadian, Canadian. I have friends that are from Lebanon, you know, I'm, I don't do, oh, she's my Nigerian friend. No, I don't do that. I try to, you know, relate with, with, um, with everybody. And that has really helped me in my personal life. In my, It has really helped me a lot in my career. My career progression is like, you know, really great. The number thing that has helped me, you know, financially, economically is budget. I love budgeting. Like if something is not in my budget, I don't know how you can convince me to, to part with it. Like, okay, now, um, when we started this year, I'm somebody that I usually, I'm my own body. I don't like going out, but this I said, I'm, oh, I want to be intentional. I want to have experience for myself, with my girls and with my, with my children, with my family. So we set budgets each month for entertainment. We set budget, this is what, and you know, like this month now I've gone somewhere. Yesterday I was supposed to go somewhere, but I already exceeded the budget for the month. So yesterday we just went to the park, near our house, we went with drinks, and sausages and we had a mini picnic you know so that has also 
that's an also you know those two things has really helped me so if you are you are someone that you are looking to um to relocate please and um, start networking you don't need to get here go to linkedin ask for coffee chat and go to, because of covid everything is now virtual ask for virtual coffee chat or oh, willing to i'm thinking of relocating what do you think I can do to jumpstart my career in so, social so, so field? Or I want to pivot into social so, so field, you know? That's it. And I'm sure people are always willing to help. So far, I'm not asking. You know what I mean? Don't go and ask for job. I'm looking for a job. I want no. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Just ask for advice. Ask for, you know, what do you think? I'm thinking of this. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. I love it. Love it. Networking. No wonder. I mean, it. it I think it's 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 just a, it, it's a strength because I mean you didn't have to say this you just <laughs> corroborated what I said. Busa is there engaging. She's there sharing something that is very useful. She's there, you know. I'm like, is this girl really in Canada? Because this time difference thing doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, it doesn't work like that. She's literally providing valuable information and just networking. And like they say, networking, collaboration is the new gold. You mm. see, both of them have, have emphasized the importance of collaboration. Both of them have emphasized the importance of budgeting as well. Again, one thing I said earlier on when Miriam spoke was the fact that, that it is abundant or it is in abundance does not mean it should be wasted. Whatever it is, access, whatever it is you have, cash, relationship. It might even be somebody who is your friend because she's always available to listen to you. Does not mean you should abuse it. I tell people access should not lead to excess. Excessive demands, excessive um, burden, right? So, so good. Thank you for, for that collaboration. Most of people I've met in the last four years I haven't even seen some of them physically, but I have a whole lot of honey praying for me, supporting me. And one day I hope to meet them, you know, all around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, if time permits, I will still come back to you. Uh, but let me go to Naomi. Uh, salary and money comes in pretty money well on a, on a monthly basis. Uh, but there are responsibilities, especially when you have grown children, especially when you have investments that are not coming back as expected, right? Especially when you also have to deal with work. Now, because these days you see that <laughs> things are happening at work. There's that There's constant that. threat of, we are going to downsize. If you do not pull your weight, you know, just so many things. So let's not think that this category of people, category of people have it easy because money is coming in on a monthly basis. They don't have issues. You know, they have cash flow, unlimited cash flow. There are other things that you are not aware of. And that's why I say this all the time. I see this um, sort of, how do I put it? You know, people who are entrepreneurs will look down on people who are, on people who are um, salary earners, as people who are slaving away their lives. The Google don't have any problem. The Google don't do whatever. Hey, but one day, one day, they will realize what they are missing. They will be, uh, sorry. And those who are employees, too, are looking down on those who are business owners, uh, be wasting your time. You better go and collect full-time job. Thank you. Need us judges over one another, right? So let's hear from the mouth of um, Naomi. Uh, Naomi. And um, we'll take the conversation away from there. Thank you. Naomi. Please unmute yourself, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kochi. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the previous speakers. Okay, as a salary earner, I'm thankful to God. In as much as the work is um, it's demanding, but I'm still grateful. What works for me as um, a nine to five person, what I do, I'm intentional about time management. Because if you are not big on it, you just find yourself that you are just running around in circles. What I do to manage the home front and expenses and budget, I plan myself in such a way that I'm the one that does bulk purchase. 
I used to send as in, I outsource it, but I no longer do that. Even before um, this um, um, first, what, what would I call it, a first um, season, the only thing I remind myself that if my mother survived in the 80s, I will also survive. Because if I remember then, there was one time my mom used to buy rice. My, my older sister would say, Mommy, I'm not eating this rice. Rat died inside it. My mother would say, I don't know what you are saying. This rice I queued up to buy is what you are doing. And don't eat now, you will sleep hungry. So what I do, as far as the food is cooked, you will eat it. If you don't want that particular type of food, you have to say it before it's cooked. So if you don't eat the cooked food, you sleep like that. So you will also bring them in, let them understand that because my house is a big house, is a large house, that I have salary regularly, that I get it regularly, doesn't mean I should abuse it. In the midst of all this, my target, because I have a target job, has just been increased. So instead of murmuring or complaining, I looked at it as a father, you see the end. You can, my joy cannot be stolen because I am working. And what, I, what do I tell myself? I've done over two decades, God be the glory in the work. So what I just tell myself, I said, this is my own uh, pulpit. This is my own ministry. I must win souls. So that's the mindset I go to work with. I enhance my perspective. I ensure that um, I'm doing what is worthy of humanity. That's what I try to do because in the long run, if I'm getting sad on my nine to five, I shift on my social aspect and I try to be very good there. I'm intentional about relationships. I'm intentional about creating impact, making impact, and bringing glory back, back to God. Because in the long run, that is what that is where I draw strength to be able to go and face the hustle and bustle at work. Because would this stop? No. Would the shouting, would the, oh, you don't met your target, you are going back and forth, push. It will always be. Then on how I manage the people around me, you find out that because there, there was somebody I was talking to recently said, I borrowed from over 20 something apps. I said, apps? It's not that I'm not aware there are apps that you borrow from. And I said, please explain to me, over 20. What happened? I said, what I always tell people, if you are not disciplined, it's something, is a trait you must train yourself on. Whether nine to five business, just be intentional. So what I do, I turn it back home. I bring it back home as teachable moments for my younger children. I have a teenager and a 10 year old. I tell them, life, you have to be intentional. If you are not intentional, you, the life will, it will overwhelm you. And it's the same overwhelmed person that is expected to be intentional. So why don't you choose to be intentional? Why would you borrow from 20 something apps? What pushed you? How do you want to repay? And those loans, they are very expensive. I'm not trying to be judgmental here, but the truth is, my mother trained me in such a way that he, she always said, if you don't manage 20 naira, God will not give you 30 naira. So what I do, I put systems in place because I am very big on, if you don't have systems in place, nothing comes to you. I might be quiet, like um, Busayo said, I am a quiet I'm more quiet in the group. Let me say that, but I try to manage the relationships I have. That's one aspect I'm growing on. But what am I trying to say? For you to attract more, you must have effective systems in place. If you don't have those systems, people keep talking about Dangote. Yes, Dangote this, Dangote that. I ask them one simple question. If God decides to say, okay, I want to do a bonanza, where do you want to put it? The shock of the one billionaire will make me wow. You go to America, go to Canada, go to this, go to that. You go around in the long run. That's not what God, God is very accountable. He is asking and demanding that, oh, this I gave you, what do you use it for? So truly in all honesty, apart from effective time management, intentionality, please ensure you have systems in place. Whether at a large scale, medium scale, or a, an enhanced scale, if you don't have it, it will never be. I jokingly told coach that my dream is to be able to afford first class tickets from my investment. Yes. That investment has been delayed. It's not something that we, I'm not giving up. I just, I can just avoid for a while 
go back and re-strategize, I will still achieve it. Because like uh, Miriam said, people are making money. So I just tell myself that swim to those who are making money. Leave the complainers club. There will always be people who will complain. People are making money. I sit in the finance sector, so I know I'm aware. You, as in, people are struggling. I do, am I, am I, I'm not ob oblivious of that, but people are swimming in money. People are swimming in money. So what I just told myself, if these people can do it, I can do it. The only thing I just said, I, I tie myself to God Almighty because he is the true giver of every good thing. So I don't, I don't put him to the background. I work with him. I am his attendant here on it. So I do that so that I can bring him glory. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please give it up or give it, give. I, I love what she said about time management, which is something that we have to really, really consider in a time like this. Um, as much as things are happening, we must not lose sight of the fact that distractions are bound as well. If you're not intentional, I mean, Miriam said she wakes up in the morning, she goes to social media and she draws inspiration. She probably knows how to pull the brick. When she has learned, if gotten the inspiration, she's out. Some of us don't have that discipline. You now sit down there. By the time you realize two hours gone, you are scrolling, flipping, checking, check. And you know how social media is. He draws you in. Like, am I echoing? No. No, okay, all right. So it draws you in and then you get a lot inundated. Time is money. Yeah. I like what they already said about this year being a year of wealth and so many things happen. I told them in church today, I said, see, when we say things are not happening, there's no money. Is it that God has mopped up all the money on earth? God is not central bank. God doesn't do fiscal and monetary policies. You know what they do with fiscal policy? They use tax, you know, decisions to sort of regulate the economy. Monetary policies, what do they do? The amount of money in circulation, the kind of increase or reduce depending on the state of the economy. God doesn't do that. If they, I was doing a research a few months ago and I realized, I can't remember the figure, maybe somebody can help the value of currency and money that's in the world. The money is still here. What has happened is that wealth transfer has happened. From those who have lost money in stock market or cryptocurrency, the money has moved into the hands of certain people. And what happens every day is that wealth transfer happens. So God has not mopped up the money. The money is here. How many of you were we in edge earlier in the year when I said that God told me that this year there'll be transfer of wealth and individuals would lend to nations? How many of you remember? That's what is happening. Now, government, I mean, somebody was anal analyzing Nigeria's level of debt a few days ago. I'm like, this nation is, is in a good place because we are here. If not for us, Nigeria is in a mess. They keep rolling out bonds, euro bonds. You are lending to nations already. If you are buying euro bonds, treasury bills, you are lending. You're lending to the country. That's what it means. So Bible, when God says something, he's not messing around. If you have ever bought euro bond, you have lent to a nation. In my mastermind, we did some foreign investment. We are lending to companies. That's what it means. So this is a year where well, just, but you see, sometimes we are faced with this reality, and I needed to break it down to people who are listening who don't even understand. But wealth transfer is happening, and time management before I derail is so important. What are you doing with your time? Again, I said grills and frills. Enjoy yourself. Some of us movies, some of us hanging out, some of us social media to unwind, but nowhere to say enough. I'm going to call the PM, but just before then, I was going through the chat, and I'm glad that I saw this comment by, okay, I don't want to mention her, mention her name because she sent it to me as a direct message. She said, sorry, I'm a bit confused. You know, earlier on, I was saying everything God has for me, everything the universe has for me. 
And she said, I may be confused, which universe? Why are you using new age terminology and God at the same time? I love it. I love that. And she's smiling. She's looking at me and she's smiling. I love it. Right? I don't want to go into the dynamics of all of these things, but Psalm 115 verse 16 says, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the heart, the earth, he has given to man, mankind. You can read it in various versions. We are gods on earth. Yes. There are laws that rule the earth. So when you hear the word universe, universe, go and Google the meaning. There are planets, there are, there's the universe, which is where we are, which is where God has made us overseers over. But there are laws that rule the universe. Laws of attraction, laws of multiple, so many laws. So the thing is that a lot of times as Christians, we want God to come and do what he has given us power to do. Right? We are saying, if God does not allow it, it may not be allowed. You have not done your bit. You have circumvented many laws. In our circle members, I shared these laws a while ago. If you can remember, put them in the, in the, in the comments for me. Right? You circumvent laws, and God is just saying, I have given you the earth, and the earth is ruled by laws. Even the Bible says that spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities and powers, those are some of the things contending with you on earth. So when we say universe, I'm not undermining the power of God, but we must know where God has given us oversight and authority over. We must know where to exert our own energy exact our own authority and, and not just say God will do it. So when I say everything the universe has, it means everything in this world that is mine, it will come to me. So don't let that word universe inundate you. It's not, I'm not mixing anything. God is God. God is sovereign. 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 And he has given us power and authority. And I'm just literally saying on earth, in the universe, in the world, everything that belongs to me will find its way to me right? I do my beat. I follow the laws. I do what I'm supposed to do. I'm consistent. I show up with the right amount of energy, the right amount of kind of mindset that will attract what I want to me. I hope that helps. Um, last but not on the least, eventually I called you as I, as I introduced you earlier. On. Um, Olajim, okay, I know you are a very fiery business owner and entrepreneur. Uh, you have pivoted over the years. You have tried this. You have done that. It wasn't working. You shut it down. Recently, I know you said you employed a CEO for your company. I'm like, ah, shame, you know, we now not go and step down like this. And I want to leave a soft like baby girl like, oh, 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 come and be running all these nasty words. Right? right. You, are very, you are very dynamic. You are, you are, you are such yeah. a go-getter. You've been in business almost all your life since you left school. Um, in a year such as this, how do people excel? How do people push through? How do people still achieve their goals? How do people be their best? How do people make money? I saw you in church today, all looking pain. I'm like, gosh, say who says there's no money? That looks like a couple. It's poor, okay. right? <laughs> Stay with us, please. <laughs> okay, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for having me here. And thank you for this year, if I can say that, uh, because thank, thank God for smart stewards. I mean, I'm a very intentional person. I, I am like extremely intentional with every single thing that I do. I am intentional from my time management to my mindset to every single thing. So I joined smart stewards well, sometimes in 2017 or maybe 16 thereabout. Um, and then, so I, I learned something. It was on the group some, some day. So it wasn't even so much of the things coach said for some of the things I learned that are working in my life. It was something somebody said on the group, something somebody has mentioned. And someone had mentioned this pen to save for smart stewards, for 
um, at GT that oh, they spend to save with GT. So for every money that goes out of your account, um, you can set that something is saving for you. And I just did that for my business. You know, just something like I just did that. That simple thing was one of the, the first year I did it. It paid this. It, it paid the rent of the next year. You know. You know when I, I've always done business. You know, and I've always done business from by myself, no structure per se. And over time, I started putting structures in place, going for courses. I am big on self development, which is one of the things that has also really, really helped me on this journey. When it comes to self-development, you will find me sitting right in front. So um, that's one of the things that has really helped me because as a challenge is coming, that I have read about it or I've seen it or I've heard about it or coach has mentioned it or somebody somewhere, somehow, somehow, I have the I have the knowledge or the clarity to tackle that thing because I've learned it somewhere or because somebody has mentioned it or because I can go back and say no I've read about this thing before or I go and look for the information to solve that problem. I am very big on the fact that I know that there's always a solution out there. Someone else has done that thing that I'm struggling with, so why should I struggle? So I go and find the information, then I use it. And um, another thing I also want to mention is is integrity. integrity everything in, in business, you know, I've had times where it's been like quite, um, where, okay, so there was this year that I did, I can never forget, I think I, I, I did a job, yes, it was a thrift contribution, and by the time I received my, I received the money, and then I bought, I invested in machines, and um, the projection didn't work as I thought it would work. So I projected that, oh, at this time, this machine will be producing this number of clothes. And this, this I run a garment factory, by the way. I, I, I am into um, mass production, this garment mass production. We produce for companies, we produce for white labeling other people. So it's a commercial, commercial fashion. And we have our ready to wear brands as well. So it's actually not a one man small business. So I've, it is almost, impossible not to have structures in place. So over time, I remember that year where I bought the machines and the machine did not, I invested in Ajo, you know, I'd collected Ajo and I was supposed to be paying back. So in my projection is like, oh, one machine should be giving me up to like 400K at least. And then um, I didn't find tailors. <laughs> so I didn't find the people who were supposed to use the machines and it was Ajo I used. And man, that was like the toughest that's been for me. I was like, Gosh, how am I going to get this money? So what I kept doing was knowing that, okay, um, I just can't try to tell myself that, see, um, I have to get myself together and solve this problem. So what are the things I can do? I started looking for how I can have money and fund the business. And currently I work with like three different other brands, not only two of them. So I work with, I work in my business and then I work in other, with other people. And that's one of the things that taking you back to self-development, what self-development can do for you. Because now I am not only um, relevant in fashion business, I'm also relevant in a lot of things. I, I do structure for people. I, I create content. I manage communities. I do like different things because those are like the things that um, the, my learning has been able to, has given to me. So. I started calling people and asking, so I would ask this person and say, you know what, I can, I will pay back in slow time. And that was what I have done. And I was able to clear that bill. But after then, you would think that I would stop um, treat. No, I did not because, but that lesson was a major lesson for me. But after that time, I, if I knew I'm looking for money, again, just like what uh, Miriam said and what Busayo said, I have good people around me. I have very intentional people around me. So if I need like a million naira now, instead of me to go and look for people who will say, who will, instead of me to go and get a loan or go to the apps and go and be borrowing money, I, I look for my friends and say, okay, can five of us come together and do 200,000 naira a job? But these people are the people I know, that I know that I know. And I have been coordinating a job for a few years now. And I started that by thinking, what can I do? And people have trusted me since 2017 up to now. 
we run this cycle of our job that gives give us money, access to money without loan. Because I'm a business person, I need money to run around. I need cash flow. And sometimes you, cash flow is like the lifeblood of your business. If you're out of cash, then everything is gone. So when business became tough, if there's ever a time business becomes tough, you know where to go to. You know that you can use your, you can leverage your integrity. You can have people say, oh, I trust that she's going to come around. You know, even if the business is not producing the money, she, you can bank on her. And again, it's, I'm linking it back to self-development. I can bank on me. If the business is not turning out anything, I can bank on me to do other things that will fund the business. I can bank on me to generate money from other things. I can bank on me to use my brain, to use my hand, to use my head. I can literally use every part of my body to generate money. And that's because of what self-development has done for me. And when I say, oh, I do different things, it looks like, uh -uh, why are you? I'm, I'm, I'm the person who preaches concentrate, do something. Yeah, I've done fashion business for the longest year. I've done fashion business for over a decade, but the other things I do, I, I, these are the things that I've also, also funded my fashion business at some point, but that's because I've been able to do time management very well. I learn time management. I wake up very early in the morning. I exercise. My body is very yeah. important to me. My brain is very important to me. I read. I listen. I listen to music. I make sure there's positive energy around me. So even when the day comes that the business is giving me a headache, I'm like, no, you will not keep me here. I excuse myself. I'm like, positive energy alone. Hello. So like I guide me because I know I am the one that I'm banking on, right? So that's what I'm going to say to the business owners. If your business is going wrong, you are the leader. You are the one heading that business. If you have gone for courses and gone for courses and you are saying, and they are, they are talking, you are saying, I know. It's not like I don't know that. Just know that you are the problem. You've learned, you have learned, you have learned, you have learned, but you are not doing that thing that you have learned. And I found myself at that point in my life, at I'm like, okay, I am the problem. Because Pastor Sam said that thing when they said, what you are really saying, you know that you are not doing. <laughs> are you sure you know it? <laughs> and when he said that thing, he hit my brain. Like it was like, somebody hit me, huh, man? I, I went, okay. I actually don't know it. So I decided to go back and start doing the things I know. So until I do the things I know, I don't claim that I know it until I do it. So I started doing the time management. I started doing the learnings. I started putting money aside. I started doing everything that coach has been teaching. And when I said, oh, finally, I was telling, like she said, I was telling her this, I said, I'm, I'm hiring a business manager because my business was giving me a lot of headache. The distance of my learning and the people I had in my business was too wide. There's somebody who needed to be at the middle that can help us communicate, you know? It's like the CEO of a bank talking to maybe the front, Tell her, telling the front uh, office person what to do. It was too wide. I was always angry. I was always edgy. You know, mm. all of those things. I said, no, this is not the place for me. I need to move, you know. And this is the business that I've invested a lot of me in. I almost shut it down. But I told myself, no, I'm not going to shut this business up because I know the dream. I know what God has told me. And I read a book also where something was shared there where the person said um, she shut down her business. So this woman had shut down her business and she was also featured, she shared, she was the only one in that book, that's book, book, the book, book, The Girl Entrepreneur. She was the only one in that book who shared that she, she shut down her business. So I went back to her book. I, I went to look for her, particularly to read about her. I'm like, okay, so she shut down this business. Why did she shut it down? She read, this, what were the mistakes? She, she wrote about her mistakes. So this is also, you learning from other people who something bad has happened to. So that's why you can't rest there, you as a business owner. So if anything, it is you. You have the capacity to change who you are, to change the situation. If the business is not making money, you make money. And jumpstart the business again, right? So again and again, I... I <laughs> I can't go on and over. Let me not put all my energy in here. I, I, you, you feel me, right? So. <laughs> oh wow! Um, thank Ladies, you for having me. <laughs> I'm looking at the time. I'm like, it's almost nine o'clock. What? It's like we should continue this conversation till like midnight. I am totally enjoying it, and I'm taking notes. And of course, of course, we can't, we can't keep us all here because um, it's work. If you would, uh, if I can crave your indulgence. We will take a few questions. So if you have questions, you can drop it in the comments. But again, one thing that I am also, that I, well, that I picked from Olajimoke's um, talk 
is the fact that we must learn to be flexible. So today, that's what I can I, I have energy too, right? And um, we have been having some since the beginning of this year. I've been talking back and like, this is not working. I, my coach, let's, you know, and overnight, I just said, you know, I'm going to have a word with her. Let's talk about it. And we talked about it. I'm like, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Let's move things around like this. Within the working team, these are the things, because I feel you will be able to do this. Another person will be able to do, you know what? And we, 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 it was a very beautiful conversation. Here we are again, having another beautiful conversation. We will effect the changes. We'll continue to have beautiful conversations. We will achieve the goals. Why am I saying this? We must learn to be fluid and flexible. Some of us, it's not working. You want to die there. Ah, I tell people, only God is unchangeable, unchanging changer. If I do not send you letter from the safe today, I'm human because after this call, I will eat and go and watch TV. That's one way I step down my day. I must watch a movie before I sleep. To now get on the email, no sorry, gone. I'm not God. God is the one who is a we my yeah. He says it and he doesn't fail. Shola is a we yeah. I will we, I will yeah. I will apologize. Do you get it? As women, we must learn to be fluid. Something is not really working. Yes, I know we teach consistency, we teach persistence, we teach tenacity. But you are looking at this thing, you are like, thank you, as a matter, say me, I sorrow, I say. If I, I fail many, I fail myself, I disappoint myself, but I pick myself up. But we want, we are like, no, what will they say? They have said the idea, I have done 20 things. Maybe I'm saying the same thing. I have done 20 things. Nothing has worked. I will continue to do 40 things until something works. So don't hold the life itself. You don't even have control. The Bible says that man looked at what he has built and said, hey, my soul, my soul, me. Hey, me, look at what I've done. And God said, look at this man. Look at this man. Tomorrow, in fact, tonight, take away your life. So some of us, we hold on to things. We hold on to relationships. We hold on to things that are not working. And you are exasperated. You are mentally and emotionally spent. And you want to die there. We die here. Don't die here. Live here. If it's not working, move on. I'm telling you. So that's one thing we must learn, flexibility, fluidity. You say, what will people say? They will say, I'm not serious. Let them say, between you and God, you know you are putting in the effort. If it's not working, it's not working. Rather than running out and getting yourself stressed, moving on to the next thing, use your energy for something else. So beautiful. Everybody has said amazing things tonight. And I, I wish we could just go on and on and on. Look at us. We are still 153 women strong. Gosh, I love it. Should we do this again soon? Come and join the inner circle. Come and join the inner circle. Come and add to us. I, yeah, we will do another one, bring in another set of people. But we believe that, see, as women, we, some of the things we are looking for in Sokoto is here. If I allow these women to go another round, we won't live here because they are so full of energy. And... This is not like, when did we tell you, all of you? When? Today. This morning, yeah. Out of the abundance of their, so this thing, we didn't give them one week notice. They are speaking directly from their minds. We need to encourage some of us, you're looking to get a mentor. The mentor has not refused to mentor you for six years. You still want to die there. When Miriam, when Alajimoke, when Tolu Lokpe, when people in the inner circle, can encourage those in a circle lady. I don't even know where they get the energy from. Create this women, sha. Right. Peer mentoring, reverse mentoring, regular mentoring. Somebody says we should do giveaway. Giveaway, okay. We are not doing giveaway. Come and join. Bring in your energy. Come and tap from the energy in the house. And let's, let's, let's pack fire, right? Your light, my light. Let's pack fire. Let's get things done. This 2022 cannot, it won't be the year that will, that would, that would keep our, 
uh, that, that will make us bow our heads. We will rise together. We will investments that have been delayed will come back. We will do more investments. Eh? Even before it comes, we'll make more money. We will encourage, we'll pay with one another. By the way, we're having a pajamas party. It's an all night sleepover. Yeah. Um, we, did we uh, pick the date already, Olajim, okay, today? Um, not yet, we we'll announced yes. it. Yes, but it's early June. Those who yes. came for the last pajamas party, they, they know, right? We're having another pajamas party where we bear it all, a physical. Like we come, we sleep over, you come with your pajamas, we come with food, we talk, we pray all through the night. Those are some. So those who are looking for giveaway, there are plenty of giveaways already. Just come, put your energy there. Eh? I love giveaways, but sometimes it's not worth it. And I say giveaway, sponsor two people. Come and join. Come, come and let's get let's get our acts together this year. So um, do we have any questions? Please screen, grab um this uh, page, whatever you're seeing, tag us on social media, smart stewards across board. Shola and Daskade Shaki. Uh, Busai, I'm coming to you. I see your hand up. Uh, just tag us. Help us create awareness. The video will be live on my Facebook page, Shola Smash was at the Shaki, so you can share, you can listen to it over and over again. But we have coaching calls once a month. We just treat this to the public so you can have an idea. We have accountability groups. A lot of things are happening. A lot of things will happen this year. And I'm telling you, the millionaires, the billionaires that will emerge this year are here. Remember, I said the world is here. It's been transferred, right? Um, what else? That? For those who, someone said, I want to join trips, I want to invest, I want to save. You can consider joining the Smart Investment Club. There are two different things, right? At the club is where we talk strictly finance. Here we talk marriage, children, parenting, finance, and everything. Do we have questions? Um, so if you go on Smart Stewards, you will see the links. Decide on whichever one you want to join. We'll be glad to have you in this Master Wars community. Uh, we are about 12,000 strong across our different um, uh, platforms. Investment Club is about 850 members from 35 countries. We have social chapters. If you're in the UK, we have a UK chapter, US chapter, Canadian chapter, Middle East chapter, and all of that. Do we have any questions? Okay, Busayo, please unmute yourself. I see your hand raised. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. So I wanted to say something, you know, now the old world is focused on inflation. We are saying inflation, inflation, inflation. But if one of the things that I know you've taught us over time, at least since 2017 or 2016, is the power of emergency fund. And doing inflation, the thing is, the prices are going up. However, the prices of a good investment, they are going down. But if you've not been a good steward, when there's inflation, you will be focused on the prices of food or other things. And instead of having you know, emergency fund to mop up the reduced, um, the reduced um, the stuff that has been reduced, all those crypto that are losing value and everything, instead of you to focus on that investment part, you are focusing on buying all those things. So what am I trying to say? That this is still the best time to invest if you have emergency fund and how we have emergency if you have joined us i know i know that member of smart stewards even as people are saying there is inflation people are still investing people are still investing so i just have one message join us join us people that joined us um five four years ago now that there's inflation they are investing people are still you know we are not focused we are not overly focused on the increased um, price of goods and services we are also taking advantage of you know, the reduced price of stocks and everything. Because if we are not, we are not careful, you know, I'm always wondering that why is that doing inflation? Good as, you know, certain things are on the increase and certain things are on the decrease. However, you won't be able to focus on those things that are, that have decreased. Your focus will be on the things that have, you know, increased. So I have one message, just one message for this, join us, join us. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you. thank you. Um, final words. Um, let, let me have all the panelists. I think I will take that as Busara's final word. Naomi, what will be your final word, parting word? I'm looking through the questions also. Um, yeah, what will be your final words? Where's um, Miriam? Okay, go ahead. Someone asked a question and I've responded as in about systems being in place. The final word will be, Ensure that um, you are joyful because if you are not joyful, 
you 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 will lose your clarity no matter what fight for your joy because that also triggers them um, that also set the motion what triggers you your your mental health and your mental health is very key at this point in time maintain your bandwidth what do i mean by that ensure that what you are consuming is good for you if not just do it do away with it so that you are not overwhelmed because if you're overwhelmed you lose your joy and losing your joy will just make you feel that everybody around is succeeding but yet we are just there very low far thank you thank you so much um pastor of my life i'm going to tell you to unmute i see your hand is up maybe we can take just two questions or three at the most and then we can call it a day because i know there's work tomorrow as much as I would love to stay. Okay, so Pastor um, Fulala, please unmute yourself. If you have a question also, you can just raise your hand. Pastor Fulala, can you hear, can you hear me? Please unmute yourself because your hand is raised. Or was that a mistake? Okay, does anybody have questions? Uh, where's Miriam? I wanted Miriam to... Say our, our final words. I can't say, Miriam, please raise your hand so I can, I can see you. Okay, do we have questions, um, uh, Laju, okay, on the, on the chat? No, I can I can't Somebody say. Somebody was saying something about business or something, something. Uh, I can't see it. Um, what business can she invest in in Nigeria or something? How do I get to know business to invest in in Nigeria? Okay, what business to invest in in Nigeria right now? Um, Miriam, turn on your video, please. Um, what business can I invest in in Nigeria? So, um, honestly, th that's a very, very um, <laughs> ambiguous question. But what I would just say is that, what do people need right now? It's hard to say what business. That's 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 very wide a question. Does I say hey, what business? You can invest in real estate. You can you, you you can do real estate business. You can do you can sell clothes, right? You can do so many things. But I think one of the tips and tricks for really really making money is what do people need right now? Especially in a time where people are trying to also conserve their cash flow, food. Right? For example, a few years ago, you all know that I went into the confectionery business. I used to do donuts, egg roll, and all. I stopped during COVID because I'm like, well, there's nothing like shame money because your bank doesn't discriminate against credit. If it's credit, it's credit. And I tell people, a one cover credit is better than a five naira debit. Credit will move you forward. But I stopped it. So in protocol, people have been, because early morning, we will take it to church, we will sell out, and people have been saying, yeah, coachy, church, start again, like, I'm not doing. Then one lady will bring toast bread to us every Sunday. And then last week, occasionally, she will just disappear. We will see her, like, when there's market like this. So today, I didn't know they had ganged up against her. The unit, some unit members just contributed money, bought bread, brought toaster to our unit in church and all of that. By the time the lady came, I felt pity for her. She was still strolling as usual, bringing the toast bread. Then she entered the office. We were doing toast bread already for free, free of charge. There's no gap. She was so, I, I wish I could just say, how much is everything? Bring your toast bread. And she went back. Because if you are not serious, people need food, right? So if you're thinking of businesses, essentials in a time like this around the world wherever you are right essentials that's a general you know general advice but there are other things there are people so once you network with people you will get to know things that you can do really right somebody said the month is almost over well um, i will have om uh, the the pm answer to that but i already said give away one month free for the next so you can join already and then you have the, you know the whole cycle okay so uh miriam i wanted you to give your final parting words on mute um okay so this has been 
very explosive. I'm sorry, I lost my network for a bit and I missed um, some parts of it. But I've learned a lot here and it, it goes, goes back to what I said about surrounding yourself with the right people. The kind of conversation we've had here, nobody is complaining, nobody is talking about who, who, what, and like it's, I, I'm not leaving this place the same. That's just the honest truth. And imagine having these kinds of conversations, like at least maybe one hour every day. Maybe you, you go to the WhatsApp group, you read what is happening there, what people are contributing. You, it's, it's going to compound over time. So in business, like um, she just said, um, in fact, Olajumoke, you were like confirming my decisions by saying, you know, if your business is struggling, nobody is saying you should shut it down, but look for other ways to make money to fund that business, right? Right now, if you're going to go into any luxury business, you have to look at your circle. If you're surrounded around people who can afford it, by all means, please do luxury business. There's money in it. But before you start a business, look at the people around you. Look at where your environment, can they afford what you're trying to sell? So that you will not come and complain that the people, my, my friends are not patronizing me. Nobody supporting me, haters, this on that one. Even if they want to, they can't even afford it. And even if they do, they afford it, they try to support you just once. It's not sustainable. So like she said, in business, please, whatever it is you're going to do, just look look around you, look, look, look gauge your environment, your circle, and um, try to sell what's they can afford and what they need. And lastly, for those, I struggled with um, really finding my feet in terms of what I really want to do because I was in the entertainment business for the longest and I was an artist manager. So I worked with some of the big names, but then it just wasn't, I, I couldn't sustain it because I had to do nightlife, you know, to be in the game, you have to go to the club, club rounds, this one. And I just, maybe when I was younger, yes, but now I can't, I, I'm a mom now, I, I can't do it. So I had to transition. And that's what I knew all my life. Like I did PR, you know, artist management, road manager, I traveled, you know, that was all I knew. I didn't even know where to start from. And I had to start all over again. Believe me, I, that's why I tried different things. But one thing I learned was when you are around certain people, you know, and this person says, oh, I need this. If you're very resourceful, you're going to find your feet. You know, you're just resourceful and you're ready to give value. When people ask for help, someone will, do you know a caterer right here? Oh, yes, yes, I know you link the person. I'm looking for this one. Just try to make yourself useful as much as you can. Eventually, you're going to find, you just notice that people are probably calling you for, for one thing, one particular thing. And some, some of them will even tell you, ah, you start this business now. And you are always helping us to go and source for meat. And start meat, start meat business who will patronize you. So if you're asking what, um, don't say well, because uh, food business sells, you rush into food business. You may not have people that will buy the food from you. You understand? So the people around you may not need food because they all cook in their house like Auntie Shola. They will do their ball cooking. So <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you on your own you know so but just try to add value i know it's, it is not popular these days these days we monetize everything every to the last drop you can't even give somebody small free advice like this you want them to pay for everything it's not popular but i'm i'm a bit old school on that as it has worked for me so please whatever you do try not everything should be monetized yes monetize some things but know what to monetize and just add value in the process for the people that are asking what business to do People will start telling you to, to, to start a particular business. And oh, I'm, I'm really grateful. I mean, I, I attended thank this thing and I'm so, thank so, so happy. You. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to, thank you so much. I'm going to have a large more okay, say our final words, but I, I see one or two questions. Somebody says, how much is the minimum to invest within the club? It is what you have. Right now, we have slowed down on investments this year because we are trying to recover some of our investments. But there, there, there's what we call safe lock, low risk opportunities where you can put your money and you, it returns about 8%, 9%, 10% to you with a minimum of 5,000. I tell people whether you're investing 5,000 or 5 million, investor is investor. I hope that answers. You say somebody is introducing commercial property, buying a shop in Alade market. Have you heard about it? We will consider it. We need to consider the ROI and some other things, especially real estate, but thank you. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Legbede for mentioning that we look into it. Uh, what other questions? Okay, what other questions? Can we have access to this recording? If you go to my Instagram page, uh, no, Facebook page, 
personal page. It's there and it's been shared to the group as well. You can always catch up with it. One month giveaway free. So Inner Cycle runs in, in quarters, January to March, April to, April to June, right? And then July to August and then September to December. What I'm saying is that ideally we're not supposed to take people in until July actually, right? But we are saying if you join now, that means you will, if you join for the quarterly option, you'll be there from now till August. Wow, that's a lot, but it's fine. But if you pay for one year, you are there till, you know, for one year, you get the bonus a um, few days in May, in May and then June as a bonus as well. Right, I hope that helps. Uh, don't get it mixed up. Inve Smart Investment Club is different from the Smart was in a Circle. Smart Investment Club is strictly finances, investment. By the way, next week, Friday, oh no, this week, Friday, the Smart Investment Club is having a webinar. We will throw out um, the information. We are bringing Kalu, myself and Kalu are just one of you know, um, the finance coaches that we respect a lot. We'll be having a webinar for the investment club and we are throwing it to the public again, just as we did. We are inviting you. Um, DTF, if you can get our mailing list, I will look for it. Make sure you are on our mailing list so that you can get information. Friday, 7 p.m., I think, West African time, it is also free. But that is organized by the investment club. So you can also come and learn. That one is strictly finances and it is for men and women. And we'll be talking about um, the financial part of it. You can bring your husband and all of that. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, Elijah, okay, go for your final words and let me look for the mailing list. Okay, um, so for the, I just wanna send my words to the business owners here. I'll say, don't, don't, eat everything, don't spend everything, don't invest, don't put everything in your business. It is calm if all you have is, oh, this business, you're just putting your money back. You're like, oh, we're applying back, we're applying back. It's been said that business owners don't invest. And it's actually a very bad thing. I know I was I, I was in that category for a long time until I joined Master World, where you just want to see the business boom. You have this big dream. You are just looking at it. It has to be there, it has to be there. But it's a scam. Um, don't put, it's like putting everything inside in one place, invest your money. You say, oh, I need the cash. Yes, treat investment as investment. From your profit, invest something. Don't plow back every single thing, right? Look at what has happened from between 2020 and now. Different things can happen. Have emergency savings for your business. Have investment for your business. And that does not mean that you don't need the cash, right? It's, it's like you are, you are also owning another business. So that's what I, I want to say to the business people here. Please don't say I'm plowing back everything. It's a, it's, a, it's a very wrong place to be. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you so much. I just dropped the link for our overall mailing list. Um, we will send out an email also regarding the SIC's webinar, which is free. Uh, for our members, of course, <laughs> they have access, but we're also extending it to the public so you can join us next week Friday. So don't get it mixed up. If you want just money issues, then join the Smart Investment Club. If you want mentoring, women, support, then join the Inner Circle. And if you can, join the two, right? We have the Smart Stewards Junior Club for children. Put their children, put your children there. We have the Academy. Go there. There are courses, $10 course on different aspects of finance. So we, we are here to support Africans at home and in the diaspora to help you achieve your world building dreams. We have a free telegram group for Smart Stewards where every Tuesday evening we teach financial literacy for free. They have just, you know, shared the link. And we have a Facebook group for women, Facebook group for women only. So see, we are everywhere. Don't say we are not helping you or we have not done something for you this year. Eh? By the end of this year, we must have a lot of testimonials and particularly from the inner circle. So let me tell you this secret. The team members think that I am more inclined to the uh, investment club, but 
the inner circle, this was how Smash was started. You guys have my heart. So see what I'm doing now, right? Uh, just, just giving you information and all of that. I love you all. I want us all to turn on our videos so that as we always do in our community meetings, we are going to take um, pictures and just share it everywhere. Let me take the panelists first. Okay. Gosh, beautiful. Then I am going to remove the spotlight. Thank you so much, ladies. Short notice, you outdid yourselves. We're going to bring you back again. And, um, you know, we'll do amazing things together. So I'm going to remove everybody from spotlight so that we can take our general. Busayo, uh, you are removing, refusing to be removed. <laughs> Have you been removed? Yes. I think so. All right, ladies, everybody turn on your videos. We will take, I'm still seeing you, Busayo. Ah. Who am I saying? Okay. Gallery. All right. So everybody turn on your videos. We have about three pages. So I will take the videos one after the other. Turn on your videos. Um, at the count of one, two, three, screen one. Beautiful. I don't want to see that. Olatokuma, turn on your video. Right? Everybody say cheese. Yes. Any money we are getting 2022. Now for what? Oh. <laughs> Say your own. I'm okay, taking okay. the first picture. Okay, I am taking the second one. I see a lot of my people. Fuke, Anthony, I got. I love you all. Uh, screen two. Everybody, any money where I get this year now for enjoyment. <laughs> screen three. Any money? Ah, see, their videos are not on. Let me just take it like that. Okay, so the videos are not on. I've taken just two pages because people's videos are not on. Uh, we will allow you to unmute yourself and you can uh, just say something nice to us. Uh, where, where do we unmute, Seth? All right, everybody, unmute yourself and say something nice to everybody. Thank we you love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a beautiful week, everyone. Yes, come back. Come back. And make make good use of it. All right. Bye. 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 Have a great night. On Friday. Thank you, ladies. Amazing session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. See you soon. Right. Bye. 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 Struggling with my Hello, video. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my Dolly Pimp Pimp. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> uh, Pastor Fulala, what happened? You wanted to ask a question. Unmute yourself. One minute. We can't hear you. Uh, Pastor Fulala, unmute yourself. I just asked you to unmute. I know you wanted to ask a okay. question earlier on. Oh, Fine. all right. No, good evening, Coach. Good evening. That was a very good one. Thank I. You. I believe that this is actually for me because I was just chatting someone now that um, I've been in business for a while and um, I felt like just, you know, throwing in the towel, just walk out and just cool off. So when I had um, a, a large okay, when she was just talking about like, there are some things that you know and that you're not doing. So it's like, if you're not acting, you know, when she um, made a, a referral, a reference to Pastor Sam and all that, and that really hit me because I know so much, but I'm not acting. So uh, I just felt, and then she mentioned something that even if you're in a business and um, these are not really working, you can actually do something else to, to ensure that you know, create capital for your business. So it really got to me and I really am, and I'm highly energized 
And I thank God, you know, for joining this meeting. So I believe that I'm going to have, I would act. You know, anytime I see you in church, I'll say, well, I've been procrastinating and all that, but it's time to act and not just to procrastinate. Thank you so, so Thank much. you so much. Thank you. Party after I'm party. For you. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you in the inner circle. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I will. I will. I will. I hope somebody is, uh, I'll will be my accountability partner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining this call. We are thank going to be distilling blessings on all our platforms. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pop your video. I wanted to tell you that your night gown is fine. Hello. Kodi, <laughs> you're being recorded. I hope you know. Oh, <laughs> please stop recording now. Just to say, oh my God. <laughs> please.